Mrs. Radio. First, give the word to, to my boss, Mrs. Anita Okova, Director General of the U.S.
take attention on this uh, duty for the, all the uh, authorities, local and national authorities, to allow all the uh, children to go safely uh, to school every morning. Thank you, and we are very again happy to be part of this uh, team uh, to allow us to, to, uh, to bring to New York today, to Paris, and many other places this uh, beautiful exhibition. Thank you. Just one word before I, I, I pass uh, uh, the microphone. Uh, I think this exhibition also shows, uh, to some extent, the incredible uh, progress of some countries uh, uh, in this particular area. Uh, and uh, you will see that um, uh, there is progress, that countries are really making an effort to, to uh, enroll kids in school, to put them to advance with the education for all goal. And I think by this exhibition, you will see uh, this uh, uh, very well requested. So. Good evening, I'm Olivier Béjean, CEO of CIPA um, Press, a French independent photo press agency. Um, our daily job is to cover the news of the world, and we have a network of 600 uh, correspondents in mostly every country uh, of the world. And uh, we, we, we get used to cover uh, breaking news and things like that. And one day, uh, a member of my team came in my office with this idea and this project. Um, making photos to describe how difficult it can be for children to, to do the, the journey to school from their home to the school. And uh, as soon as he told me, uh, he explained his idea, uh, I considered this was something that we, we must do. We, because um, the purpose of a photo press agency is to raise awareness uh, about important topics and the access to education is for us of course something very important as well. That's the reason why I'm very proud that we are part of this and uh, of course I thank all our photographers who worked on, on, on those uh, coverage of different situations in, in, in many different countries over the world. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mark Joseph with Felia uh, Transdev North America. I just wanted to say uh, thanks, first of all, to UNESCO and SIPA, to Jean-Marc and our folks uh, who helped really organize this, and to thank all of our people here. We are inspired by this, uh, by this project uh, because we're reminded as an international company with uh, doing business in about 27 countries around the world, that so many of our people who work here have come from these other countries. Uh, today, represented at the UN from Veolia Transdev, we have people from six, uh, from five uh, of six continents, and we have 25 different countries represented by our employees alone. And we are very inspired by Santiago and people like Santiago who care so much about education that they're willing to travel two hours a day each way to go to school. And for those families who support uh, people like Santiago, that reminds us how lucky we are and how we need to be involved in helping others. So thanks very much for your inspiration to all of you. And let's uh, do our part uh, to help others around the world.
social mobility for uh, economic success, uh, I think. Uh, more and more uh, we see in, uh, in a world that is um, uh, very open and dominated by new technologies, uh, by innovation, that uh, the gap between the rich and the poor, both in terms of uh, uh, global community, of uh, different uh, member states and regions, including within societies, uh, uh, it's very much uh, uh, decided by the level of education, the quality of education that uh, uh, young people receive. Uh, it's an issue both for the developing countries as well as for the developed world. Uh, in many societies uh, in the developed world, um, a poor quality of education system is an impediment to social mobility. And we see that unfortunately in uh, uh, very many of the developed world, not to speak about the developing countries where uh, on one side, education is an opportunity for them to join this competitive world, uh, to prepare their, their, their young people uh, with the knowledge and with the skills that is needed. Uh, but not always this happens. And I think the biggest challenge nowadays when we know that uh, the population, uh, the demographics of, uh, of the world shows that uh, young people below the uh, age of 30 are more than 50% of, of, of the population worldwide. And we see that uh, if they don't have the access to quality education, if they don't get the skills needed, uh, they cannot join uh, the life of work afterwards. Uh, they, we see violence, we see um, social conflict, we see societies uh, that are struggling uh, uh, to achieve uh, the level of sustainable development and of, um, I would say, social and economic advancement. And we at UNESCO firmly believe that uh, education, knowledge, we speak about not only education but about uh, learning nowadays, without this, uh, we will see a world that will be unstable, we will see societies that will struggle with themselves of how to uh, be part of this uh, global community and uh, we will see degradation of the environment, we will see degradation of public health, uh, we will see deepening divides between regions. So education really brings sustainability to a lot of efforts nowadays uh, 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 in this world. So I think by doing this exercise and this uh, exhibition we pass a very strong message about how important education is and how important is that uh, 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 communities, uh, governments and communities make possible for kids to go to school, to have safe environments, because today we spoke about violence against women and girls, that schools are safe environments for girls and for children on the whole, but mainly for girls to uh, go to school and to be uh, involved in education. Could you identify yourself? Hello, my name is Heather Rogers and I'm with Kyoto Moves, a Japanese newswire. I just want to thank all the panelists for the wonderful exhibition. I think it's important for all of us to see that. Um, my question is from Ms. Bokova of UNESCO. I know that, for example, India is introducing very cheap, smaller tablets for students in poorer areas that perhaps have to face what a lot of these subjects face, several hours of transportation to get to school. I wanted to know, how do you see technology and small tablets, things like this, improving education for children who have to undergo very long uh, commuting hours to school? Thank you.
uh, new technologies offering incredible opportunities uh, for uh, open educational resources uh, for from different levels, starting from the primary and moving up to universities. Uh, it's an incredible opportunity for uh, uh, learning, for training. Uh, we uh, have been working with the uh, Microsoft Intel in Cisco uh, on the uh, teacher training uh, using open educational resources. Uh, I think the uh, fact that uh, uh, in many of the developing countries, uh, even in places uh, where there are increasingly marginalized communities, we can reach out through new technologies and giving them the opportunities uh, to um, uh, acquire literacy. We have such projects in Nigeria, for example, and some other in Kenya. Uh, it gives an incredible opportunity nowadays to, for, the, for people to get uh, education and learning. Um, so um, I think this revolutionizes uh, the way we approach education. Of course, questions about content is there, questions about multilingualism is there, questions about how we use mother tongue is there. Uh, co local content is crucial. Uh, we promote very strongly uh, this approach through the Broadband Commission, an initiative that we started with the uh, International Telecommunications Union two, two years ago. And we are fastly moving, involving the private sector, uh, uh, involving the governments and the um, NGO community into this. Uh, we, our experience is extremely positive, and I think the future, apart from, uh, of course, uh, putting the right education system in the content, is about using new technologies, including the training and teachers. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, we have one more question, and I would like to ask Mr. Jernigat. Uh, we see virtually every form of transportation available in this, in this exhibition. And transportation is not something we've really thought about. What is the role of transportation? And does it in, in some way integrate societies? Could you, could you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Uh, what, what we see in this exhibition are marvelous stories uh, of all uh, these uh, young boys and girls and uh, of their will, of their faith in education, of their courage uh, enough to, uh, to uh, affront, to uh, fight against danger and uh, against uh, long hours of, uh, of travel in order to get this education as uh, Mrs. Uh, Director General told it was so important for the future. And, uh, but uh, the message of this exhibition is that uh, uh, this journey uh, 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 to school uh, are extraordinary but should not be uh, like that because uh, uh, the local authorities uh, should give uh, to uh, all the uh, children in developed countries and there are some uh, very interesting reportage in, uh, in developed countries but also in, uh, in, uh, in uh, the rest of the, of the world the ways to get uh, to go uh, safely and uh, comfortably uh, to school and not to be uh, obliged to fight every morning and every evening to, uh, to go uh, to school and come back. And the role of uh, the public transport and the role of our company is to give uh, the knowledge of, uh, of our experience with these uh, authorities and to give also the dedication of our employees because uh, transportation, as I told, is a uh, uh, social uh, TV, and especially when uh, it, it comes to uh, carrying uh, uh, school children. So uh, our role here is uh, to give advice, expertise, and the dedication of our people in order to, uh, to have all of these marvelous experiences uh, stay extraordinary, uh, but uh, not the uh, obliged run of, uh, uh, of the children. Thank you very much.